and sat there and uh, kibitz with each other until it was done. Mm. Well, we're seeing a, a, a more three-dimensional drawing, and uh -huh. this, you're saying this is the third level only. Right. This, okay. this is uh, the level which housed the rooming facilities. The triad that you see on the right were the, um, the fourplex rooms. Um, mine was actually on the, the first triad in the, in the background uh, on the, the right corner of the diamond. Uh, that's when I was staying there, both uh, invited as well as uninvited. Hmm. Well, let me, give me a sense of this. I mean, this is the, your first time there, and you're only addressing each other as numbers, right? Yes. Okay, so they take you down, and I imagine there's different colors on each level. There's different security men on each level. Well, there Give are, us an idea of what, what went on. It's actually. the same security unit. Same security. It's is the same this, security this unit. This is Wacken Hut. Oh no, no, no! Wacken no. Hut's not allowed in there. The the um, the SRT and the and the uh, CRT units, wh who do you do the, the so-called camo dudes, as they're I guess called, mm. uh, they they are external and and groom like security. Mm. The Papoose Lake security is a separate unit involved with the United States Navy. And the reason why they're involved with the United States Navy uh, goes back to the original reason for the inception of the Papoose facility. The, the Papoose facility is a biological offensive as well as uh, defensive biological warfare facility. That's why it was originally created. Um, first time in, I didn't see that floor. The, uh, the first time in, we were, we were taken to the uh, debriefing room that Mr. Um, the, the book room, so to speak, with the, the blue binders that Mr. Lazar accurately uh, represented to the uh, public. And uh, we were told what to read and where to read. Mm -hmm. um, after that, uh, and I, I've got, I want to be as polite as possible, but the facility that I was in, while it may have been the same facility that Mr. Lazar was in, he was in the facility for, uh, I understand, some three and a half months uh, on and off. Uh, I spent on and off a good few years directly involved with that facility. Um, and from the position of the Galileo Bays that he accurately described, all the way down to the 4-1 number, it's the only facility in the world, he claims that it's one floor, it's the only facility in the world I've ever run into where the first floor is called floor one as in it's actually stamped on the wall. We've That's a, why it's multiple floors. Get a little more detail here. You can't see that from Galileo, though, with all you know, due, due deference to him, that if you're restricted to the, the Galileo bays and the, uh, the avionics bays, mm -hmm. um, you can't see that. Here's a, a little more close-up drawing. And, and now, mm -hmm. was, was this a place that you stayed indefinitely, or were you brought back every single day? What was the time frame like? Well, I, w I was only actually put into that, that residential bay, the one in the upper right-hand corner, mm -hmm. uh, only put into that residential bay uh, after a couple of years actually working in and out of the facility. Mm -hmm. The majority of time we were, we were brought in, and this is after we were cleared for, for level four, we went down, were badged in, went through the cleansing process and all of that business, and then were taken to the Aquarius briefing room, which was right in front of the, uh, the bunny room, the, the, the B1 room. So you, were you weighed, inspected, and detected? Uh, what, was the, what was the screening like? You don't get up? into uh, the areas aside from certain engineers into the, the Galileo Bay and the storage facility, which used to be the propulsion facility, but they ended up moving that, um, uh, some of it over onto the first floor area, deeper in, and some of it down to the second floor, because some of those propulsion units, I can't get into what exactly they're used for, but some of them were used for weapons. Mm -hmm. They were changed, back okay. engineered into some weapon um, right. applications. But you, were, you were thoroughly screened in entering the well, facility it, and leaving I us. never got in um, oh. past the nurse's office mm -hmm without being stripped. Mm -hmm. uh, all of our property is taken, we're stripped, we're weighed, uh, given a physical examination, and then initially until the, the, the SEALs, the, the, um, the security unit, would allow me to, to have my booties, I'd have to walk barefoot around the corner from the nurse's office and over to the restroom area um, in the hallway outside of the Galileo Bay to get some booties from my feet. So I, I had to actually walk barefoot from there to there as a little, 
I guess it was a protocol problem of theirs or whatever, but once the protocols are set into place in a facility like this, they're not altered. Mm -hmm. So the Navy SEALs were providing security at this? Um, I didn't really say Navy SEALs. I said the SEALs. Um, they, their nickname was the Black SEALs. Hmm. A, a, a mysterious branch of the Navy SEALs? A, a clandestine I'm not certain offshoot? that they're directly related with, uh, with the, the spec war people. They are a, a different breed. They're the kind of folks that, as accurately um, indicated by Mr. Lazar, could be very intimidating. Mm. They carry firearms, they carry automatic weapons, and uh, it's called walking the line up there. There are lines painted on the floor. They are stationed in various locations in the facility. Given that the fact that the, fil the facility may still be there, I don't know. I haven't been there for a while, so but tell me about this God only knows. concept of I, having to stay on a line. Uh, there were blue and red lines on the floor, and you were instructed where to walk and when to walk. Um, initially, if you come in and you work in a new job, you don't know what you can get away with and what you can't get away with. So what do you do? Okay, honestly, what do you do? You follow all of the rules as exactly as you can. So when somebody is new in a facility like that, they're feeling oppressed by the weapons, it's an oppressive environment. It's protocol driven. What do you do? You follow all of the rules, and you don't know what you can get away with. After you've been there for a while, you learn that you can kind of slow down in certain places. So when, after I was given an H badge, when, when I was able to actually take a walk in the facility, that, because of the, the good graces of the number one guy, um, I was allowed to walk around a little bit but I was still not allowed to stop and look through the bay windows down over looking at the craft. Mm -hmm. uh, I could slow up and glance, and down near the end, uh, I'll say down at the end of the hall for the Galileo Bay is where one of the, the security units was posted. Uh, I would go down next to the end, say hi to him, and he'd nod at me, and I would turn around and walk back just to see what I called the chocolate drop. Uh, there was a small triangular ship in near the end of the, the nine bays that looked like black liquid mercury. It was beautiful. It looked like this, this beautiful little triangle. There were no, no corners on it or anything like that. And it just sat there. And it appeared to be setting above the level of the ground. No noise, just sat there. And I loved to look at this thing when, when uh, I was allowed up there, when we weren't event driven. And what shape would you say that, that this craft took? It was, it was generally triangular. Generally triangular. It was smaller than the, the back engineered stuff that the, the good folks in the public have seen wandering around the skies, the triangular ships. Those are all, those are all ARV craft. They're back engineered defense related craft in case, well, they would be used in case uh, they need to be used. Did you get any information about this craft while you were there or after, about its origin or its functionability? Nobody would speak with me uh, about it. And the point, the, the, the point that I was making about it is I would kind of stop and glance. Mm. Uh, and if I would slow up too much, I would hear, walk. And so I would continue walking. And when a guy is carrying an automatic to continue weapon walking. and yells walk, you tend to obey. Uh, yeah. yeah, you do, until you figure out what, what, their, what their limits are. And mm -hmm. some of the limits that uh, we got to uh, when we finally got together as a unit for Aquarius, and when we were finally told what we were dealing with and with whom, mm -hmm. uh, we started making fun of them a little bit. Uh, we didn't like being treated as monkeys up there. You realize that you were a little too valuable for these guys to be ordering around like a gym coach. No, they had a job to do. But, but, but at the same time, we, you know, I, I'm, I am kind of a, not just that I attended UNLV as a, you know, as a rebel, uh, I'm kind of rebellious. I've always been kind of rebellious. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so this was after uh, I, was, I was thumped to be the working group leader for Kaela. Um, I kind of led them in a, in a mini rebellion coming out of the chopper and things like that. This is when they stopped taking the buses from Groom, that god-awful bus. 
uh, and they choppered us over to Papoose. Um, and we would do the monkey routine down the, down the walkway leading into S4 and actually walk like monkeys. Really? Just to irritate them. Well. Yeah. But there was a, there, it was clear, though. It was clear, though. Mm -hmm. There was a set of blue lines and a set of red lines. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to stay inside of the blue lines. If we would step outside of the red lines, this is outside the facility, they would shoot us. Right. And it was made very clear. So as long as we were doing the ooh, ooh, ooh business inside the lines, they wouldn't shoot us. Yeah, if you were acting like a monkey within the line. Yeah, that's after yeah. we were there a while, though, after yeah. I was there a while. When I, when I came in there, I had exactly the same impression yeah. that, that Bob mentioned. Mm. Uh, these folks have guns and they'll shoot you. Yeah. And my eyes were, you know, that big around just like everybody else's, I'm sure, that went in there. Mm. Unless you're a little, you know, enjoy that kind of thing, and I don't. Well, in the interest of time, let's uh, move to where you're starting to examine these biological specimens. Mm -hmm. And you're that dealing... Papoose, you mean? Right. And, right. and you're there, and you've been going through this, but it dawns on you at some stage that these things did not originate from anything that you were familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, we were dealing with uh, an autoscope on, on conveyor in Papoose. And, um, and it wasn't just the, the, the examination of, of the cells themselves, the, 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 the neural tissue. It was the examination of the neural tissue and the information that we were receiving about the function of the cells because it wasn't squaring up. Um, there were certain invaginations in, in the internal uh, membranes in the cells which were not normal on, on what's called endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, and these invaginations uh, led us to believe that these were actually engineered cells. So my first thought, in fact the thought of the, the guys, uh, was that we were dealing with a, some sort of a, a biological warfare agent. And we knew that the, the history of the facility was set up for biowarfare, so we were basically, we thought, dealing with a potential Andromeda strain, and they didn't want to, to tell us about it. Um, so they brought in, we, we, we finally rebelled, uh, actually, as part of the, the Aquarius unit, totally rebelled and said, look, we, we are, we're working with the, the uh, disubstituted purines, the, the reversing like chemicals to, to cause dedifferentiation in the cells. And the things were not, we were not able to accomplish the goals that they were asking. And we finally said, we, you know, we're not receiving enough information as to the origin of the, of the tissue. Uh, well, they brought somebody else in at that point. He was the, the ramrod to put us in line. And after working uh, six, eight months with the ramrod, he finally gave up. And he rebelled. Hmm. And when that individual rebel, rebelled, then we were finally told with what and with whom we were dealing. And what did they say? Uh, we were informed that we were dealing with extraterrestrials, at which point I sat there and I didn't really know how to take that. Hmm. Uh, and in fact, one of the gentlemen, Bob, who's now, um, Robert, who's now a different Bob, not Mr. Lazar. I never worked with Mr. Lazar. Yeah. Um, this other Robert, mm -hmm. he basically said, I don't believe you. And I think most of it, because he and Stephen had worked with the project for years prior, it was like, why didn't this dawn on us earlier? Mm -hmm. And so he, um, they, they got rather defensive about mm -hmm. that in the, in the briefing room. Uh, and uh, we were finally advised with, with, uh, with whom we were dealing, uh, given briefing books to read, the uh, Defense Technical Intelligence Center, mm -hmm. the briefing books. Uh, those blue books, as part of the, the, the King Tut books, as they were called, the, the King uh, Training Update tapes, um, they had a DTIC on them. And, and I didn't know what that was for years and years and years. DT. Right, for Defense Technical Information Center. All right. And they didn't come from the Defense Technical Information Center. They just got the books from there. Okay. And I thought it was like you know, really important at the time and all of that, but that's just where they got the binders from. They were like hand-me-downs. Uh, but um, 
we were finally brought into the past the um, the uh, BL4, which was a joke. It was not a BL4 lab. It was a three plus lab. You're talking and about the level of quarantine that's associated with that? associated with with infectious agents, the risk groups which are normally considered 